Hey everyone, in this video we're gonna teach you how to use Firefox, the web browser, completely and we're gonna go through all the features that the Firefox browser offers uh, while you're using it on your PC. So, first things first, obviously as you know and as many of you can guess, Firefox browser is a internet browser and what that basically translates to is that it's a software that you can use, well, this version being on PC, that you can view and you can use the features or the information or the dynamics that the websites offer. So if you have a Windows, you need to have a browser in order to work with the internet, to interact with websites, get information that you need, and we call those softwares browsers. In this particular video, we're gonna teach how you can use the browser Firefox uh, specifically and be able to make and use all of its features that are available to you and any other extra layers that it might offer. So we're gonna go through all of that uh, detail by detail. So uh, let's go through some basics about Firefox. What is uh, Firefox? Well, as you mentioned, it's an internet browser. What are some of its known features? Well, like most browsers, it is known for its synchronization feature, which is if you have uh, Firefox installed on your PC and one on your tablet or your phone, any data, any browsing, any history, any uh, data that you might visit or bookmark, whatever it is that you're doing with that browser, it's gonna be synced. What By, by that, what we mean is it's gonna be uploaded to the internet and then it's gonna be synced with your account and then you, the other devices are gonna download that. So for example, if you bookmark a page on your PC, you can access that bookmark on your phone and vice versa. So that is one of the features that Firefox has. Another feature is primarily known for is its speed and efficiency. Many people consider it to be the fastest browser on Windows. Uh, if that, whether that is true or not, I mean, that's up to people who are into that sort of thing. We can say that it is relatively one of the safest. It's a, a, a really good browser. And sometimes, you know, it's just a matter of preference. Sometimes people just prefer Firefox, whether it's how it looks, maybe they're a fan of the brand or the company, or they like a specific feature, the way the menu looks, whatever it is, some people prefer one browser over another one. So, do we uh, miss any other features from the Firefox? Well. As a whole, not really. But I'm also going to point out that Firefox has add-ons, which is another name for extensions, which are features that are built into the browser. In this tutorial, I'm not going to cover individual extensions. I'm simply going to tell you what are the extensions, some of them, and I'm gonna show you how to install them. Outside of that, you can go out and you can do some research and you can uh, have a look whatever it is, you can come back to this tutorial, but we're not going to actually show you specific add-ons or extensions and show you the abilities that they offer. So let's start. Well, the moment you open a Firefox page, this is what you get, okay? So this is a simple page with highlights and recent websites that you've visited. This is your bookmark toolbar, this is your address bar, and this is search. Go to facebook.com and we get facebook.com, very straightforward. So, so far address bar, we have covered the address bar feature. Now, right le on the left of the address bar, you have this little home icon. This is gonna take you back to your default page on Firefox. So whatever it is when you open up your Firefox, you're gonna go right back to that or your home page. Right next to this, we have the refresh or reload current page option, as you can see. What this does is if for any number of reasons, the website that you're on has any issues loading a specific page, you can press refresh and then you're gonna get a completely new page. Uh, let's try this with this one right so as you can see the web page itself is loaded so it's gonna be so like let's say I'm, I'm not happy with the way this looks I think it's 
cringy I wait a little bit to loads up so as you can see the page is loaded I'm I still have an, and then maybe I want to do a refresh so I simply press that button and here we go okay guys so Another feature that you have that's recently added to Firefox is the reading view page. So what is the reading view page? As an example, we want, maybe we're browsing like a page that has a lot of text. So like a Wikipedia text, let's say like, uh, let's go with, uh, Albert. So let's look, for example, at Einstein's uh, Wikipedia. So what is the reader feature? It's actually fairly simple to you. When, when you have a page that's bulky, if you, wanna, if you wanna read it, you wanna make it more comfortable, you see this little text icon right here? Simply click that. And as you can see, it becomes a more PDF-like sort of page with bigger texts and, 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 and more comfortable to read. You also have options here, so you can have it read out loud to you using audio. You can have access towards the font. You can make it bigger. You can make it smaller, spaced, not spaced. You can control all of these. You can control the way the text appears. You can go dark mode, right, uh, light mode, or sort of like paper background. So you have access to all of those. This is also what we call a pocket feature. I'm going to show that to you later on. Just have it in mind. So this is also the read view. In order to deactivate it, you just got to click on it again. When it's on, as you saw, it's got that blue thing. And then when it's deactivated, you can see the, uh, the gray outline. So besides this, we have, we have a couple of other options here. We have bookmark this page, save page to pocket, pin tap. These are our main ones. Bookmark this page, it's basically telling your browser to save the page and you'll be able to view it later. We're gonna go through bookmark extensively, but for now just have, the, have it in mind that when you bookmark a page, you're gonna be saving that page, the address of it on your browser so you can view it later. Save page to pocket, also similar function, a little bit different, we're gonna go through it. You Now we have pin tab. Now what pin tab does is, as you can see, regardless of all the tabs that I have opened or closed, when I pin a tab, it will always be there. And it's gonna go smaller so it doesn't take up a lot of space but it's always going to be there. So that's how the pin tab function works. You have a couple of other features here. Copy link, which is basically going to copy this link right here. Uh, for example, if you go on Reddit, let's say, uh, you know, let's, let's, let's go inside like a arts and crafts page. So if you want to copy this link, you could simply press this. And as you can see, I can copy it back later on, fairly evident from the name. You have email link, which if we press email link, as you can see, I can send the link, not the page, the link to the page as an email. I'm just going to bring the software here so you guys can have a look. Uh, there's the link, so you can email that send tab to device now here's how this function works if you have your firefox installed on other devices so like tablet and phone and if they're synced in with the same account you can send this link to that device and read it there so that's that feature share you can share it with your contacts with applications that you have installed on your device so you don't need to copy and paste the link, it will automatically be sent there. You can also take a screenshot, which you can also do using Windows. We've got videos on that. You could check it out if you want to, but 
essentially you have the choice to take a screenshot and you can copy it you can download it whatever you want okay and as you can see the screenshot is downloaded there you go so whatever picture you may see uh, you can screenshot that so these are the features explained here do you see this little arrow pointing going downwards here that is your download icon so anything that you download will show up here recently if you want to see all the downloads you click on show all downloads and you get this little tab right here just for reference we're going to explain this later on this is the library tab it's not specifically the download tab you have access to history tags all bookmarks and everything from here it's a pretty cool interface that allows you access to pretty much everything in Firefox. So what about this one? So as you can see, do you see the little search using Google? So you don't even have to use search there, right? You can just search here. So address bar, search there. You can also use, Google, use the address bar to search for Google. You don't have to do that. You can say like uh, shopping for Christmas. Now, as you can see, there is a major difference here. When you're using the address bar, you're default using Google, unless you change it up in the options. But if you're using this one right here, you have the option to change up your search engine. So you could look it up on Amazon directly if you if your purchase is going to eventually go to Amazon or if you're after something to buy, you can use Bing, you can use DuckDuckGo, and you can use Wikipedia. If you're not happy with that, we have this little thing called change search settings, which I'm going to explain this to you later on, but just have it in mind that the search bar is primarily used for, uh, well, search this little icon right here with the star is the bookmarks option i'm going to explain the bookmark option in full detail later on but just so for now know that that's the bookmark option here we have the extensions or add-ons as we call them we're also going to explain that don't worry about it we have library which is bookmarks pocket list history downloads and synced tabs we're also going to go through that just have the icon in mind bookmarks directly as opposed to this one bookmarks sidebar here we had the full bookmark here we have the sidebar Let's see the bookmark sidebar and here we have Firefox account so with that in mind let's go through all of these options here so this is no different than this, okay? Just so you know. See this? I also get it when I click here. So see? Same thing. What is this? Well, this is the account that you connect to your Firefox. So let's sign out so I can give you an idea of how it works. So as you can see, now I, I'm not linked to a Firefox account. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sync back in. And we have separate videos on this, so feel free to use those, but in case you want to. So you need two things to have a Firefox account. First one is an email. And you need to sign up. I have already signed up. We have videos of playing this. Please feel free to look them up. But for now, I'm just going to teach you how to sign into a Firefox account. Let's enter our password here. We're going to 
sign in. Now you're going to get a code that is sent to your Gmail. You're going to want to check that and then you want to sign back in. So let's enter. I'm also going to show you that. So we're going to enter our Gmail. Your quick guide. Okay, enter my password. As you can see, sign in code for Firefox. That is my code. So I'm going to go back to Firefox. We're going to put this in. And sync between devices. Get started. So we just, these are for enable to uh, enable it in order so you can install your uh, Firefox and sync it up with other devices. So if you pay attention now, as you can see, my account is synced and I'm getting a synced uh, icon. So let's go to manage account. Let's see what features are available here. So here's the stuff you can do with your uh, Firefox. Okay, so you can have a couple of uh, features if you want to do that. You can change your password, delete your account. Obviously, we don't want to do that. Devices and apps. As you can see, Firefox for iOS, Firefox and Android is not connected. Mine is connected on PC. Two-step verification. That's a process you can enable for security measures. You can go through that if you wish so. Account recovery, you create a recovery key. So in case you lose access to your data, you will have that recovery key and Firefox will give you access to those. Secondary email, you can change that if you want to display name and account pictures. So those are what we have in the account in the manage account section. Send tab to device. This is basically you send one page on whether it's your tablet or your phone or whatever it is, you can do that and you can view it later. So let's say for any number of reasons, you have a web page that you want to sync up, uh, you have viewed a page or you've saved a bookmark that you want it to be immediately uploaded to your Firefox and your internet connection is having an issue. If you want to double check, you can click sync now and all of your data will be synced up with the Firefox admission. So that's that's the feature there. Synced tabs. Well, if you send tabs from another device to here, you're going to get a list of all those synced tab right there. Sync settings, there isn't really any specific about it. Uh, you can change what stuff you sync. So maybe you don't want your passwords to be on your tablet but you want them on your pc tabs history you can make a change to all of those if you want to change them you just the ones you don't want to be synced you just remove the tick the ones you do you leave them on or vice versa disconnect you can also use this which will disable all of these features uh, but the browsing data will still be here so up to you, as you can see, after I made the change, those two are no longer here. So that's the management section. We also have logins and passwords. I have a number of passwords saved up here as an example. As you can see, this is the website address. This is my username and this is my password. I can edit these how you go on edit none of these passwords are working by the way and you can change your password to whatever you wanted and you will cancel 
you also have the option to not use a safe password on any pages and you can enter your own. So you can enter the address that this password is for. You can enter your username and you can enter your password and then to log in. So let's give this a, let's give this a try out. Let's go with Facebook username. Uh, your quick guide. Johnny forever, whatever the hell you want. So I'm going to save this. And then we're going to open up Facebook.com. And then, as you can see, I get this with the username and password. So you can you can save up your passwords you've already used and Firefox will remember them, or you can create your own using create new login. Uh, nothing else is left here. Uh, this is the feature that allows you to save passwords, sync tabs, we've gone through all of them. Let's move on. So the next one is protections dashboard. So what is this? Most people don't use this. This is just a security measure and it tells you how many social media trackers, cross site tracking cookies, fingerprints and uh, crypto miners basically have been blocked by your browser. You can make it more secure. Uh, Firefox has features to deal with that. You can also use the Mozilla VPN uh, for privacy purposes. Other than that, there isn't really any much feature going on here. Let's go to new window. So as you can see, we have two features here. We have new window and we have new private window. So what's the difference? Well, new window is basically you create another window like this and anything you do on those new windows will be will record it, uh, tracked, uh, saved. You get all the sync features on them. So it'll go into your history uh, if you if you save a password. If you do a search, all of those would be hinked, uh, synced up with Firefox. Whereas new private mode, you basically get a new page. I'm just going to place this in the frame. Uh, you get a new page. How do you know that? You, you see this little thing here? You don't have that with the original Firefox window, but you have it here. See? So what this window does is basically allows you to visit websites without the tracking or the data being recorded on your browser. But this doesn't make you anonymous to websites or your internet service provider. So have that in mind. So that's the difference between a new window and private window. You can't be well recording your history while you're, uh, browsing the web. Next we have restore previous session. As you can see, it's grayed out for me. Why is that? Because I haven't had a crash. So if you're working on your Firefox and suddenly you have a web crash, well, your, your, your app goes down and you were in the middle of something, you will have this feature that basically restores your window to the way it was before. Then we have the zoom feature. Now, what is the zoom feature? Well, the zoom feature is if you're browsing a website and you're not happy with the way the fonts are, maybe they're too big or too small for you, you can use the zoom feature. Now, there are two ways about using the zoom feature. One is using these buttons right here. So whenever you want to, you'll just go here and you can, this button right here. What does this button do? Display the window in full screen, which we already are, relatively speaking. You also have a short key for this. So it's, as you can see, it's control. And then you use your wheel to go, go in. As you can see, that's the zoom number. Or use it to pull out. So that's our zoom feature. Uh, the normal one, as you can see, is 100%. So if you go too far, you can always click this and you'll come back to 100 then we have edit things like cut, copy, and paste. You already know those, but you can do them here. So like check this out. 
I select this, I come here, I copy, and then I go here and I paste. You can do it with keyboard, I really up to you, it doesn't really matter that much. Okay, next one is library. Now, library is actually uh, a master word in Firefox for a couple of features that it ensues. One is the sync tabs. As I told you, sync tab is you're on a you're on a page, let's say this one for example, and uh, well this one's not necessarily page. let's say on this one for example, let's say we're on Facebook.com or just Facebook. And then send tab to device. If you have a device connected here, it'll show up right here. Okay, so that's synced tab. We have downloads, whatever you download is going to show up here. You can also go directly to the folder by clicking it. Uh, We have history, which is all the websites that we've visited. As you can see, uh, we did some visits in this session that we had, and it's all of it's going to show up here. If you want more detailed history, you can click on show all history, and you will have it literally by day. What you can do with these, you can do a couple of stuff with them. You can delete them. You can copy them and you can open all the web pages you've visited in tabs. You can also organize them so you can make new folders. You can change or add more info to the viewing way and you can also import and export things. I have explained this in a video before, but you can basically back up your history or you can restore your history from before, or you can choose to do that from a file. You can also import data from other browsers, including Edge, Edge Legacy, Explorer, and Chrome. If you're interested in these, we have explained them at length in other videos on the channel. So let's go back to library. So we have view pocket list and we have bookmarks. Well, bookmarks, as I explained a little bit, uh, maybe you're on a specific page. Let's say you're on this Wikipedia page and you're just browsing it and then you go to Nobel Prize in Physics. And you're interested in this page, but you don't have the time for it for any number of reasons. So, well, I want to start, I want to read this later. What you do is you click on this little star here and you say bookmark page. Now, when we go back to the library and you go to bookmarks, see that bookmark is my latest bookmark. And then I can just open it back up again. There you go. See? So that's where your bookmarks go. You have more bookmark features. Uh, we're not going to go too much into it, but very much like history, you have a full task. You can look up all of your bookmarks. You can order them. You can create folders. Just look up bookmarks in Firefox and the channel and they will very likely show up to you. Now, when it comes to bookmarks, I also need to explain this. Do you see like, while I'm on the page, I have this little thing right here. This is called the bookmark toolbar, right? And it basically allows you to access your bookmarks very quickly from just right here, okay? So whatever it is, you can just open it up from here. That's the bookmark aspect. Now, one item is left from the library, which is pocket list. What is pocket list? Build your personal library of fascinating reads. Included inside Firefox, the pie button 
lets you save art articles from across the web and read them in a quiet, private space. So it is a little bit different from the read view. If you want to activate it and have a look, which we do, let's go ahead with it. So I already have my account logged in. I recommend you do as well. We're going to go accept. So you get this little link here called my list. We have an example here, but we can add more. Let's let's look this up. So as you can see, it's very similar to the reading mode, except you have a couple of extra features like you can highlight things. Okay. And you'll get the highlighted as a list right over here. You can bookmark. Okay. You can bookmark this page. As you notice, you get this little bar right up here. You can change font size very similar to app readers, app book readers. you can archive it so what does the archive do it tells you that you have stuff to read if you archive it means you're done for the day right so it goes into your archive you can visit it there you can delete it you can also share it you have all the social media here recommend copy link send to a friend you also have the option to tag it. What is a tag? Well, basically, a tag is what that text is about. So, for example, if this story is about uh, making money, for example, one of the tags would be income. What's the use of this? Well, when you're reading different texts and they share similar tags, you can just click on the tag and you'll be able to distinguish between them very easily. So this is the pocket feature list. I'm not really going to go into it. It's not that uh, difficult. You can check it out for yourself if you're interested. Let's go back to the library. And that is pretty much all of our features in the library as well. Now, we have also covered logins and passwords before. If you remember on the account section. And we have talked about this before. This is basically your browser saving all the username and logins that you enter on your PC. And it's going to remember them. You can also create new logins using this feature right here. In case you want to leave this browser, you can also export your logins. Or if you're bringing them from another browser, you can import. Let's go down. What else do we have? Oh, well, we have add ons. Now, add ons are quite important add-ons or basically extensions are things that you can add to your browser that allows them to have specific capabilities so for example you can install an add-on that allows your browser to block specific websites how do you know what to look for well very easy as you can see i don't have any extensions here but i can go to recommendations and I get plenty of recommendations so that's one way to see it or you can click on this and you will be taken to the ads on that .org, which is the official store you can call it for add-ons I'm gonna show you how to install one add-on as an example and then I'm pretty sure you can do the rest yourself how do you know an add-on is good? Well, you have all of these metrics to go for. You have reviews, you have stars, you have the number of users, whether it's verified, is, is it safe? You have all these permissions, descriptions, everything. So let's say you decided to install this one. You click Add to Firefox. We click Add.
You have the choice to allow it to run in private mode, which is basically incognito mode, up to you. I'm gonna allow it. This is installing ad block and done. So this is usually how you install most extensions on Firefox. And as you can see, I also have a well a shortcut, you could say a shortcut that pops up right there depending on what the feature is. Now I'm gonna stress not all add-ons are just simply for blocking websites. You have all sorts of uh, functions, uh, appearance, news, games, and search, a lot of add-ons, okay? You, you, can, you can have a look and see how they work. They're basically like apps. We also have, in add-ons, we have themes. So themes are gonna make your Firefox look a little bit different. Uh, for example, let's try this one. As you can see, yeah. Let's go with one that st stands out more. There you go. Just to change the look. We also have plugins. Plugins are also, you don't need really to concern yourself with plugins. Uh, they will be embedded if they are necessary. So that's the add on section. Oh, well, we have options. Now, options. Uh, Firefox has a relatively less complicated option as a comparison with other browsers. So you have Startup, which if you have a restore previous session as I've warned you before, you can make that clear. You can make it your default browser, which is not tabs. You have shortcuts, open links and tabs instead of new windows, which you have ticked that. If you don't want that, you can remove it. Uh, when you open a link in a new tab, switch to it immediately. Well, that's also off for me. You can change all that stuff. Language and appearance, obviously you can change that if you want to. Fonts, you can change the font of the entire browser here. You can change the signs. You can change the colors. So if you want to, you can even change the color of the text. We also have more advanced settings here for font people who are interested in fonts. Uh, we're not gonna go through that here, obviously. Uh, so that's that. We have default zoom. So remember I told you zoom is usually 100%. If you're not happy with that, you can obviously change it. Language, fairly simple. We have a video on that. If you wanna know how to change your language. Files and applications, so this one is important. Where does your files and applications files that you download go to. Save files to the download section. Always ask where to save files. So if you click on this one and you give it a path, it'll do it automatically. But if you click on this one, then each time you want to download something, you will be asked. Applications choose how the files you download from the web or the application you use while browsing. So this is you don't really need to know about this. This is basically like the default things you upload. So, updates. You always want to check updates by clicking on this. Allow Firefox to man uh, automatically install updates. Check for update, but let you choose to install them. So this is also up to you how you want to do updates. If you want them to work in a specific way or another, you don't need to consider yourself with this. Use auto scrolling. Use smooth. These aren't really that important either you can maybe you like this so what this basically allows you is use the cursor to move up and down a uh, picture in picture again we don't really need those let's go to home so you can choose what your home page is as you can see our home page is currently here but let's say I want to make my home page something else I go to option I go to home I make my home page a custom URL what is that URL let's say Facebook now when I go to home page Facebook. So if you want to change your homepage, 
that is how you do that. What else have we got here? New tabs. Well, new tabs, when you open a new tab, what do you want there to be? Do you want a blank page or do you want the Firefox Home? Totally up to you. Right now for me it's Firefox Home. But if I change it up here, I'm going to get a blank page, as you can see. Fairly simple. Now, web search. So these are stuff that are on your home content. Uh, let me show you what we mean by that. So we change back our home content to default and then see we, I have a search bar here. Do you see that? I can turn that off. No. So as you can see there is no search bar anymore. Right? No more search bar. You can disable top sites. So I don't get top sites anymore. I just have highlights. Right? type sites are gone. A selection of sites that you saved or visited, visited page at bookmark more so. So this is basically the highlight feature. One site deactivated. There you go. No longer there. Activates both. And you don't really need about snippets. Now let's go to search. Search is as I explained to you before, we have two search bars, right? So you can make it one, or you can keep it as two. Default search engine, of course, if you want this direct search to be Google, you go on with Google. If you want to change that up, you can use these. Search suggestions, fairly simple. You can tell it to not give you search suggestions while you're searching something up or not. You also have a couple of shortcuts. How do the shortcuts work? As you can read, it says, choose the alternative search engine that appear below the address bar and search the bar when you start to enter a keyword. So for example, let's try this, huh? Bing buying shoes. As you can see, I'm now doing search on Microsoft Bing's search engine. So whenever you want to use any of these, you simply use this and then your required search term, it'll automatically search in that area. We have privacy, uh, we have three privacy modes, not really that important to you. Uh, if you want to, you can read them in details. We have strict, custom and recommended or standard. So, each of them have their own perks. If you want to have a look, you can open them up and do that. We also have cookies and site data. So, you may want to manage or delete these when your website is slow or maybe you're afraid of viruses every once in a while. Uh, we have logins and passwords. So, autofill logins, suggest and generate strong passwords show alerts about passwords for breach websites. So this is the again the auto login feature but you get a couple of different variations of it so you can tell the browser not to ask you when you enter a password to be safe you can tell it to auto fill login passwords or not to as you could see whenever I would See, I click this and it auto fills it. So you can deactivate this. Suggest and generate strong password. This is for when you're signing up. Show alerts about password for breach website. That's not really a thing either. Uh, Firefox will remember history. Never remember history. Use custom sync for history. So you can set your own custom settings for the history. We're not really going to delve into that. I'm just going to put on remembers history address bar when you suggest when you write something there what are the category suggestions browsing history bookmark open tab sub size those are the ones uh, the rest aren't really that interesting to you these are permissions so if you want to stop notifications you can go here you can enter the website you want blocked 
Same goes for camera, location, virtual reality. Uh, the rest aren't really interesting to us. And sync, as we have discussed before, uh, it's about what sync options you want. So let's go back to this menu. Let's see what we've left. Okay, customize. So you can customize your Firefox to your heart's content. See all the stuff that I can add in, that I can remove if you're not happy with them. Actually, I'm really download it. So like. There you go. That's that. You can also change the themes here. So we have dark mode theme, we have light theme. We have two bars. I can remove the bookmarks bar. So as you can see, it doesn't show up here. If you want your bookmarks there, you want to go and you want to add that back. Yeah. really up to you so that's pretty much it you can drag and drop these icons and you can also use the space designs different space design so as you can see this up here pages here you have torch you have uh, normal and you have compact it's just pacing of the uh, devices and then we have open file. What sort of files can you open? Well, web files or importable files. So that's that. If you want to import a file. Save page as pretty much all of you know this. We have many, many formats to save the page. I would recommend bookmark or uh, for saving links, but you can also save the page. Print. Obviously, most softwares have this. Whatever page you're on, it will be semi-printable in a printable condition that you can use. Also, you will get an in-house preview from Firefox. Web developers, what you you really concern yourself with? Just know that in help, you can always go to about Firefox, and then you will get an update check. So. These are the basics of Firefox. If you want to turn down Firefox, you also press on exit. We also have the control F feature, which, which is able to search a key term on your browser. So donate. As you can see, a one, one match. That's just one word in this page. The rest aren't really something that I would consider for beginners. So these are all the features that we have on Mozilla Firefox. I hope it was a good guide. I hope you've learned something. And that is it. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked the video, please make sure to click thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, check out similar videos like this if you're interested. And if you have any questions, ask them in the comments section. I will see you later. Bye-bye.